Hello lovely people, today I am doing some guest designing for Hedgehog Hollow um, using their beautiful stamps from their August kit. So let's get cracking. Today I'm making a scrapbook page and I'm going to make my own background. For this I'm going to use stamps and I'm also going to use some sprayings. You could use watercolour paints and anything that's water soluble will work really. So the first thing I'm going to do is using this lovely big, it's almost like a poppy but it's not a poppy, but using this lovely large flower stamp, I'm going to stamp this kind of randomly over my page. I'm using watercolour paper for this, basically because it absorbs water really well and just makes my life way easier for creating um, the type of effect that I want. You can use other heavier cardstocks but this is my favourite anyway. Now I'm also going to add some leaves because, you know, why not? A um, bit of contrast, bit of extra. I'm not going to add leaves to every single flower, I'm just adding them sporadically throughout the page. And once I've got that, I'll let everything dry. Now, the ink I'm using came with the kit, so it's a really good, um, oh, what's the word, solvent ink. So it's not water soluble ink, it will dry quite happily on its own. Now, the first thing I've done is sprayed some water over my paper. I've got a large brush and I'm going to use that to help me spread the paint. So I've got this sort of mixture of corally, um, yeah, corally colours and I'm just going to pull the paint around, paint around or the mist if you like. I am spraying it in some areas, in other areas I'm just using the brush to move it around and I'm not adding it to every little bit, I'm not going for heavy layers, I'm going for light layers because I can always add to it later, um, the, which is what I'm doing now, um, and just adding water where I need to just help it spread out a bit, and that's the beauty of using the watercolour paper that I am. I'm using the brush as well to just splatter bits around so that it's not so neat, not so pristine. I'm not going for a pristine look, I'm going for something that's a lot more abstract and fluid. So then I'm going to move on to the green. I've let everything dry in the coral first, so it is bone dry. I don't want to start reactivating too much so with the green I'm using it just to add that extra splash around various areas, um, spattering it around a bit and covering those leaves. And then again I'm going to leave it to dry completely because I don't want to work in wet on wet with this, I want it to be dry. Now I'm actually going to move on and create my page now I've got the background done. I've picked out these two photos, they're of one of my friend's cats who likes to lounge in the garden and basically grows like a weed wherever he sits. Um, it just looks like he's randomly sprouted up. So I'm going to use some paper just to create the background for it. Um, and the colour scheme is kind of dictated by the colours I've used from the kit. So I've taken the inspiration from the pens from the kit, greens and corals. and I'm going to use this sort of corally background paper to mat my two photos and stick them down. I'm not worried about cover covering up parts of that paper that I've made. That doesn't really matter. That, the point of a background paper is not to display everything. If I wanted to do that, I'd just stick the paper in a frame without doing anything on top of it. Instead, we're just going to run with it. So, adding my usual scraps and bits around the edges, and as you can see, where I haven't got enough paper, I'm just cutting the scraps up so that I've got enough paper. You know, it's amazing what you can do if you just hide things, you don't have to use the full amount. And as you can see here, I've got this lovely little flower embellishment that I've cut off. Now this was actually another of the stamps from Hedgehog Hollow, which I've put onto some white cardstock, just stamped onto white cardstock and coloured it in using the pens. And this really dictated the colour palette for me anyway, which is brilliant. So I'm using that as a rather large embellishment. You can see by cutting it up I can put it in different places rather than having to constrain myself to just one large flower with half of it hidden. It means it goes a lot further. Um, having rummaged through my embellishments now, I'm just going to start adding bits here and there. So there's a lot of stickers, there's some washi tape and because we're looking at a garden sort of thing and um, flowers, I've pulled out the butterflies because why wouldn't I want some butterflies in there and I'll run through like I say, most of my embellishments, and just pull out things that I think might work with that scheme. So I've gone into some of the pinks as well, because they work well with corals. Um, I've used some of the washi tape here, I've got some butterflies, and I've also got some ready-made um, cardstock embellishments, just die-cut flowers, so I'm going to put those around as well, and they just add to bulk out um, the effect without me making more embellishments. I could make more, 
I've just chosen not to for this particular page because I want to do a bit of mixing and matching um, and show how you can use a handmade embellishment with it or you can mix and match it with ready-made stuff as well there's no harm in that and as you can see the background looks really quite professional it looks purposefully printed which I'm really really smug about and really chuffed with this now the whole point of this particular photo was we were talking about um, me and my friend were talking about spring blooms and you know this cat is probably one of the best spring blooms you can get and summer and autumn and winter every time of year so I'm going to call it best spring blooms and now I just need to run through and actually um, find the fonts that I want to use with it um, like I say the kit itself from Hedgehog Hollow did dictate my colour scheme which means I've got a lot of pink in there, I've got a lot of coral, and I've got some greens, and I can move that into the teal as well, because I haven't got a ton of green green in there. Um, the teal will start to work in with that too. So, I've got the best, which is a nice die cut font. I'm going to use this little font for spring, and then I've got the word blooms in this lovely big blocky letter with glitter on it. Um, and then add a few of my lovely enamel dots because I don't consider a page complete without enamel dots and that's it it's not complicated it's not difficult the most important thing here was to let all the layers dry between each other so I've got these lovely splattery effects but they haven't muddied together um, and that's why I've not used a huge amount of water that's the reason I've used the watercolour paper but I really hope this inspires you to use your stamps um, in a totally different way and yeah, have some fun and don't forget to let things dry. Take care and I will see you next time. Bye.